uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, in my presentation, I will review uh, the issue of uh, emerging substances, how this is being monitored in the frame of the International Commission for the Protection of the Danube River. Uh, and how does uh, the monitoring of uh, the emerging substances uh, uh, fit into the overall concept of the monitoring under the ICPDR? Uh, the major drivers of uh, the monitoring under the ICPDR is the Danube River Protection Convention, which is clearly highlighting the need of the joint uh, monitoring exercises or monitoring networks. And uh, more recently, but uh, very important, it's a joint commitment of the ICPDR contracting parties to uh, use the ICPDR as a common platform for the implementation of the Water Framework Directive. And in this respect, this means also uh, organizing of a joint monitoring uh, of the surface and groundwaters uh, in line with the, uh, the Article 8 of uh, the Water Framework Directive. Based on this, the ICPDR operates a so-called Transnational Monitoring Network, TNMN, which is uh, consisting of several elements uh, now fully reflecting uh, the requirements of the framework directive. And uh, so we have the surveillance monitoring, uh, uh, the real surveillance monitoring and the operational monitoring, both of which uh, they are producing once in a six years, uh, the aggregated monitoring data which are used for uh, uh, assessing the water status uh, in the Danube River Basin District uh, Management Plan. Then we have another type of surveillance monitoring, which is in fact a continuation of uh, the joint monitoring activity, the original, uh, the, the, the starting uh, transnational monitoring network, uh, which uh, is since 1996 collecting data on the limited set of parameters and uh, storing this data. And at the moment we have uh, quite comprehensive uh, database uh, concerning nutrients and uh, selected uh, organic and inorganic micropollutants, and also information about loads. And then finally, it's a investigative monitoring, uh, which is addressing primarily those uh, substances uh, which are not included uh, in the surveillance and operational monitoring. And here, uh, this is really the case, uh, if I recall what Jaroslav was presenting in the morning, this closed loop like uh, no regulation, no monitoring, no monitoring, no regulation, and uh, how can we deal with this? This is exactly what uh, uh, the ICPDR wants uh, to uh, investigate that uh, through the Joint Danube Service, uh, which are the flagship of uh, the investigative monitoring of uh, the ICPDR, we want to focus, uh, I mean, it's not only chemistry which is dealt with uh, within the Joint Danube Service, it's a comprehensive, complex monitoring tool, but uh, because we speak uh, today about uh, uh, emerging substances, so this is the major tool the ICPDR is using uh, for the analysis of uh, the emerging substances. How do we do that? Uh, the recipe is very simple. You need to have uh, some budget for uh, recruiting or, or hiring uh, a number of ships. Then you need to have uh, outstanding uh, experts from the basin, which there definitely are. Uh, you put them on the boat and uh, they monitor, they first of all sample the Danube uh, on the whole uh, navigable length of this river and even beyond, so that we can get a very homogeneous data set when analyzing all those samples. And uh, analyzing samples means uh, collecting uh, water samples, uh, samples of uh, sediments, the bottom sediments, and also suspended uh, solids. So, Based on this, and uh, given the, uh, the number of substances uh, we want to analyze, uh, once in a six years, uh, we've been uh, receiving really very comprehensive information about uh, different groups and classes of chemical substances. Now, coming to the term emerging substances, I mean, uh, as the, we, at the moment, we have experience from two joint Danube surveys, from 2001, the first, and from 2007, the second. 
the perception of emerging substances in both these surveys uh, is differing slightly because during the first joint Danube survey, uh, which took place uh, 12 years ago, at that moment, at that time, uh, the emerging substances were primarily those which uh, are now quite standard, which means those from the Water for America Directive mostly, because for many, or I wouldn't even hesitate saying uh, most of uh, the Danube countries at that time, many uh, compounds uh, or substances uh, from this uh, directive which appeared only afterwards, uh, uh, I mean 105-2008, which is uh, determining or uh, outlining the uh, group of uh, priority substances, uh, Senzu Water Framework Directive. So at that time in 2001, many of those compounds were still quite emerging. So really the first JDS was focusing on the analysis of uh, nonylphenol, diethyl hexyl phthalate, or uh, for even atrazine, even though there was some experience or some, some data uh, uh, regarding the atrazine concentration at that time. However, already in 2001, we've been analyzing a number of pharmaceuticals and uh, we found uh, primarily analgesics uh, such as isopropylphenazone or N-acetyl for amino antipyrene and phenazone in uh, water in the levels of uh, from, from units to tens or hundreds uh, nanograms per liter. What we also tried to do at that time, because uh, 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 we used the uh, GCMS scans uh, for the wide uh, range uh, uh, screening analysis, this was not really a determination or analysis like quantific, very, I would say, correct quantification, which uh, should have been based on the calibration curves and really all this uh, necessity of the QAQC requirements for an analytical method. At that time, we were just trying to analyze the scans to make some uh, semi-quantification, which, however, gives you a nice uh, overview for, say, sterols, fatty acids, or benzothiazoles already 12 years ago. What is the relative distribution uh, downstream the Danube? So always, I mean, I will still show a number of additional graphs. Uh, on the x-axis, you can see from the left to the right, uh, something like from the river kilometer 2,600 to river kilometer zero in the Danube. Uh, then, six years later, during the second joint Danube survey, when uh, the analysis of the water framework directive uh, substances has been or has become more standard, we focused more on the re what now, even today, we label as the emerging substances. Starting with the <coughs> perfluorooctanoate, I mean, if I remember, that was this uh, graph presented or the table presented this morning from the JRC report, PFOS, PFOA being found in practically all wastewater treatment samples. I mean, this, this, this was this GRC-based uh, EU-wide inventory of uh, the effluents. So there was no surprise uh, that we found also those substances in the Danube River. People like uh, to buy Teflon and Gore-Tex things, so, uh, and uh, those uh, substances being the emulsifiers in the polymerization were quite ubiquitous. And if we look at uh, the profile, we can see that the, uh, the highest level was monitored in the Inn River, which also then influenced uh, the Danube downstream. Uh, for this uh, particular case, I have to say that uh, soon after uh, 2007, the factory which in fact was producing uh, this uh, really elevated signal in Bavaria has changed the, the technology and uh, the release of uh, PFO, uh, PFAO uh, has been totally terminated. So uh, another, uh, I would say, successful story um, in conclusion or, or uh, based on the, the JDS2 results. As regards pharmaceuticals, uh, we have found uh, several of them uh, with carbamazepine uh, being really found at the highest level. I mean, recalling now a number of the previous presentation, no surprise, I mean, uh, many speakers uh, today have addressed uh, the ubiquitous uh, behavior and, and uh, quite uh, often occurrence of the carbamazepine in the water. So 
the same was the situation in the Danube. Uh, the other, uh, such a quite, uh, I mean, quite uh, occurring compound was sulfamethoxazole, which was the sulfonamide-based uh, antibiotic. The anti-inflammatory drugs, uh, diclofenac and ibuprofen, have been found at relatively low levels, but uh, uh, in the whole of the region of the Danube, it was ibuprofen, while uh, diclofenac was uh, observed mostly in the upper Danube. So if we look at uh, the profiles of uh, carbamazepine, you can see the, the peak is uh, in the reach of the middle Danube, uh, while uh, the pattern for the sulfamethoxazole is slightly increasing downstream the river. Uh, for the ibuprofen, you can see that uh, there, is, there was a prevalence of the ibuprofen over the diclofenac, which was uh, totally diminished uh, in the lower Danube. Uh, the ibuprofen, especially, there was a remarkable contribution from the Velika Morava, not far from here. As regard pesticides, uh, the top was uh, the 2,4-D, the dichlorophenoxyacetic acid, uh, which was found, again, uh, primarily around uh, the middle Danube uh, reach. Uh, the triazine herbicides, including their metabolites, but uh, focusing first, or looking first at uh, the profile of uh, uh, the 2,4-D and some uh, uh, phenylurea herbicides, you can see that uh, with the exception of 2,4-D, the levels were not really, in most of the cases, exceeding 10 nanograms uh, per liter and were uh, just uh, slightly decreasing downstream the Danube, the most uh, remarkable pattern was for 2,4-D. Uh, and, and the similar situation was also for the, uh, the triazines and their herbicides, with some exceptions of uh, several tributaries. As regards the other emerging substances measured during the second joint Danube survey, it is worth to mention the benzotriazole and toliltriazole. Uh, these uh, compounds are uh, used as the corrosion inhibitors in the dishwashers and as uh, the, the commercial or the, the household use of uh, dishwashers is really, I, I haven't seen any study, but I can really presume it's uh, in the whole Danube, especially in the middle and the lower Danube, it's increasing. So uh, I still b believe that uh, the triazoles will be of concern also uh, for the next couple of years. Uh, just concluding on uh, the overall feedback uh, we received from uh, the second joint Danube survey, is that uh, the levels for uh, pesticides, pharmaceuticals, perfluorinated acids, um, and uh, phenolic endocrine disrupting compounds were in principle in agreement uh, with uh, the levels which, has been, which have been found in other major European rivers such as the Elbe, Po, or the Rhine. So I think the second joint and survey provided us with the very good feedback with respect uh, uh, to uh, the emerging substances, and now the question is, what's next? The next is the, the third joint Danube survey, which will uh, commence in a couple of weeks. And uh, this time, I mean, having this experience from the previous two surveys, we really want to focus or put even more emphasis on uh, the analysis of the emerging substances, and in this respect, so, most of the compounds uh, we have been, uh, I mean, analyzing before will be on the list, but on top of that, there will be really a wide range of compounds, and at this uh, uh, moment, I would like to use this occasion that uh, we have a very good cooperation, even during the JDS2 with Hans-Jürgen Brauch and the uh, Technologie Zentrum Wasser in Karlsruhe, who will be this time analyzing not only the surface water samples, but also the groundwater samples to see the relation with respect to the concentrations of uh, the emerging substances, so we will not focus on uh, benzoapyrene or this, uh, yeah, DDT, the compounds which are being analyzed also in the drinking water for years, but we want to concentrate on those compounds which we don't have so much data about. And then also I would like to uh, highlight another very interesting cooperation and very ambitious uh, cooperation we are going to have. 
uh, referring to the presentation of Jaroslav Slobodnik uh, this morning about the Norman Association. Norman Association is really contributing substantially this time to uh, join the new survey, doing analysis for a couple of hundred thousand euro. I mean, if we calculate uh, the whole bulk of the analysis, in which includes passive sampling, uh, effect-directed analysis, uh, focusing on not tens but hundreds of uh, something we may call, I mean, Norman experts should tell if they are all emerging, but simply we can probably call all those compounds like emerging compounds, and we are going to use this opportunity to again uh, receive a very comprehensive snapshot uh, with respect to the chemicals uh, and their occurrence in the Danube River uh, in, on a really very broad scale. With this, uh, I would like to conclude my presentation and uh, invite you all, I mean, here is the ICPDR website, uh, but uh, very soon, it's now in the final stage of the preparation, there will be also the website for the third Joint Danube Survey. Uh, one of the boats, Argus, is coming from, from Belgrade. I mean, that's a, a nice gift or in-kind contribution of Serbia as well. And the boats will be here in Belgrade, uh, I would say in beginning of September, I guess. Sorry? Six, seven. Six, seven September, something, yeah, something like this. So the boats will be very close to the place we are now. And uh, then, uh, unfortunately, the analysis of uh, emerging substances, uh, you cannot make at the speed of sound, like uh, today you take a sample and tomorrow you have the result. We will have to wait for the results, but I would say more we will have to wait, the better the results will be. So with this, I would like to thank all of you, I mean, for the audience, but also all those uh, who are contributing to the survey. Thank you.